What's up, guys? It's your girl, Little Fresh Sam. So we're back in a different environment again um, with my boy Thomas Evans, aka D Tour. Um, we're we're talking with the wise today. Words with the wise. Um, just a quick little backstory on how this even came about is, I have so many cool friends, like all of, from from all walks of the life. Like I was hanging out with Leslie the other day, and she's telling me all about her story, and I'm always in here with Thomas, and he's telling me about his story, and I'm like, damn, I have so many cool friends. I wish like everyone could hear all that we talk about. So I came up with words with the wise and here we are today with Thomas Evans. We're going to get some insight. He's going to give some tips and tell us some things that you never heard about him. So my first question, um, for those people that don't know you, which probably is not many out there, your name's Thomas Evans. Mm -hmm. You go by Detour. How did that happen? What's Detour mean to you? Uh, Detour was on... I used to do a ton of breakdancing. Okay. And Detour was on a DVD that I... Well, VHS, so <laughs> think of myself. Then. So VHS tape that I get from... Ordered from this crew called Originality Stands Alone. Uh, they're out of... Uh, Cali, like I think, believe the Bay Area, but it was uh, one of my favorite crews, and they had the word detour in there, and I really loved how that sounds. So when I was doing, starting out doing art, um, you know, just as like a way to kind of make money on the side, I kind of just used detour uh, as the name that I kind of signed a lot of stuff as. It's pretty much what I used when I was like starting into video production or event promotion, things like detour that. I just used stuck. detour, yeah. So. Now I'm back to detour as the artist. Nice. I think it works well. And there's a lot of, I like your little slogan, it's detour, mm -hmm. don't follow. Yeah. I love it. No one wants to follow Thomas Evans. No, it's not detour. about that. Yeah. It's, it's about not following the, the, av the I have average. So, there's so many people named Thomas Evans out there, so detour is like the uh, marketable one. Yeah. So everywhere um, I go in Denver, I was driving on I-70 the other day, I see this big-ass mirror with you, or, you know, of you. Um, I go into Meadowlark the day before to eat, mm -hmm. see you. I'm like, dang, where aren't you? Um, which is great, and that's actually how I found out about you. You know, before I knew you, I saw your work everywhere, and it was like, it's really intriguing, and I think that's a really cool way that you advertise yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but unknowingly, you just put up your work everywhere. Yeah. So one thing I have a question is, and I think a lot of artists wonder, and will find value in this question. How do you get your work? Like, do how do you get your gigs? Do people come to you? Do you apply? How does that work? Uh, I'd say a mix of both. Mm -hmm. um, opportunities that I seek out, so like the mural on I-70 was one that I, you know, actively trying to get because I like the wall space. Yes. And I talked to the business owners and um, tracked down all the funding to kind of get it done. Okay. And there's other murals that come to me where, whether it's through a mural arts festival or a business owner saying, hey, I want you to kind of paint my wall. So it's kind of like a mix. I do a lot of studio stuff, so I'm not as active a lot in um, the street art space as I want to be, um, but it's good enough for right now. Um, so trying to always look for those different opportunities to kind of paint on the wall. That's awesome. I think that's something that we as artists need to do more of, and you actually encouraged me and helped me with this. Like, as an artist, we don't know where to reach out to. Like, yeah. there's grants out there for us, there's money out there for us, and we have no idea, but you're one that is like attacking it constantly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, that's a good tip for anybody who wants art. Like, literally, you just have to go out there and find it. If you want it, you gotta go get it. Yeah. So I think that's something you really um, inspire me and push me and motivate yeah, me Yeah, there's do. always grants out there to, from the project. I just did an Arts at Tuesday today on uh, a website that was made by Kickstarter uh -huh. and that will help artists kind of fund What's it called? a project. Dip? Jip? Uh, uh, dip. Dip. D-I-P? Or Drip. Drip. I think it's Drip. Mainly because it's kind of like each month uh, subscribers fund, you know, your, your work or you to do your work. Uh -huh. I got a grant for a recent project um, that we just concluded. And was that the Denver Art Museum? No, that was the... Which one was that? That was the We Still Live project. We Still Live. I did with my uh, friend JC, and that was through a nonprofit called Art Street. Okay. And we DNA tested 40 kids and did art projects oh, around that. Wow. But we got 32000 of worth of funding from the Affinity Group, and they did a competition called Art Tank. So it's kind of like Shark Tank, but, art. but for our projects. So. That's awesome. Yeah, so I mean, it's a lot of times it's kind of like 
there's money out there. You just got to find it. You just have to. Uh, yeah, you just got to find it. Figure out um, how to apply for it. Things like that. So, when know, did you take that leap from like a starving artist to like good? Oh, never starving artist. <laughs> you were never a starving artist. <laughs> no, I mean, really. I mean, really, it's kind of like you just go from having that side gig to doing it to where it's kind of like, oh, now I'm actually making money to where it's kind of like you can kind of make that quit leap. that job yeah but i never want to say starving artist. i don't like that whole phrase Damn. because yeah it's like uh sometimes people want you to be that starving artist type of thing yeah um because they think you make better art starving i'm like no i kind Just of like they pass say out starving <laughs> no. in that full-time leap it took about six seven months to kind of find some good footing yeah to where everything was starting to come a little bit more consistently okay cool so it's possible um clearly this is proof right here that you can be an artist and do it full time and be fine well off you know and, and i feel like you're beyond well off you keep getting big, bigger and better you know every day um which leads me to my next question have you ever created some art for someone you're a fan of mm. In terms of like what type of fan? For me, I was a fan of Method Man, and like okay. one day I like gave him some clothes, and he loved it, and yeah. then like that was so cool. Oh, okay. How about how about you? I'm trying to figure that out. Huh? I used to try to do that a lot. What you used to try? To um, do? like trying to go to concerts and try to give the artist, you know, some work. Okay. Uh, for free. But it was kind of like after a while, it was like, oh, this is like actually valuable work. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't give for free uh, quest love yeah. quest love so quest love i did one for quest love but quest love could not have been more disinterested in the art oh, <laughs> but he was he was not interested in meeting anybody yeah so it was kind of like that was like a really like a almost gut punch in terms of just like creating art for you know stuff like that yeah. purpose so it was kind of like for me i kind of stopped doing that after that, that's pretty much right when I moved to Tanzania for a while. I'd say some milestone pieces that I made for a specific purpose was one I did for Red Bull. Red Bull? That was uh, when I teamed up with my friend Mikey Fresh and Panama Sueto and Felix Fast Forward. And that was for their Red Bulls, it was called Synesthesia. Okay. Where it was kind of like I would create three, four by eight foot paintings. Once they, you know, figured out what my interactive paintings were doing it was like oh this is super exciting you know it kind of took me to a whole new level um, so that was like one project that i really loved and the paintings that kind of came out of that project so that's a good that's one of my next questions how did this like you're really innovative with your artwork like i don't know about this but i'm pretty sure i could touch this and it'll make a sound yeah so when it's like on you'll be able to kind of wave uh, your hand across and show yeah. your different sounds and everything and so how did you come up with that like that's innovative so that was uh things. so i always tried to do artwork that was interactive like add audio uh, i have a piece in the studio that's like a super old piece uh, that has like a rec, not a record, but uh, speakers. So you had, I had a speaker in there, and then it was on top of broken records, and you know that's like when I was starting out trying to incorporate sound to my work. That was about seven years ago. Seven years ago. Um, yeah. Then I, full, I'd say about eight years ago, I kind of really started that, and seven years ago I started getting a little bit more intricate, but past four years I got really intricate when it comes to adding you know computers and circuit boards to my work to where it's like you can actually touch it and respond and it talks to the computer all that stuff yeah I think that's probably one of the in my opinion things that sets you apart from a lot of artists is you're always innovative thinking outside the box you know creating new ways to create art which is I don't know, it's just really cool, you know, you're not just, um, you know, like right here, you're cardboard yeah. mixed wood, mixed with yeah. all these things. You know, it's cool, it's not, it's very interesting and intricate, which is something I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Um, tell us about Tanzania. And Tanzania. Tanzania. Yeah, and what so, were you doing out there? So Tanzania was a place I went to in 2014. Um, well, 2013, December 31st, and landed. January 1st, 2014, and it's been eight months out there. But uh, like before that, I was trying to do 
uh, joined the military, but tore my knee. Oh wow! Uh, in in jujitsu class, tore it myself, trying to choke somebody. <laughs> which is That's probably a karma. In disguise, though. Yeah, it was, uh, I tore it myself, and then uh, I was on crutches for a while. But I got this opportunity with a nonprofit to go to Tanzania, uh, do their marketing communications, like a small village in Arusha, and basically uh, just live out there for a while. It was like uh, really, it was like truly getting away from, you know, um, the hustle and bustle in America, okay. learning more about my identity and heritage uh, when I came back. So that was like a really, really cool time for me. And always having running water or electricity kind of humbled me and, you know, it was kind of like, uh, got inspired because I was having a great time and didn't really have, you know, TV or yeah. a lot of computer stuff or I'm afraid of if I come back to the U.S., it's like, let me just go for it and see where I get. That's where the big um, leap came yeah, from, right after yeah. that. So, like, that's when I came back and, you know, pretty much just started hitting the ground, running with uh, interactive work. And pretty much got the studio 2015 and started from there, like, creating piece after piece after piece. What was, like, because I know um, as an entrepreneur and someone who took that leap, what was probably, um, what was the scariest thing and what was the most comforting thing knowing? Like you said, a safety yeah. net, you know, there being a safety net. What yeah. was the scariest thing uh, for you? i just say instability, but almost kind of like uh, if it doesn't work out, that means I kind of wasted a couple of years of my life type of thing. Mm -hmm. Trying to do do what I wanted to do but kind of failed so that's what keeps me going it's kind of like okay I can't turn back now type right. of thing uh, but I have like my education to kind of um, fall back on because I went to school for business so that helps me out a lot yeah, yeah so just like, trying to figure out how to um, keep it going um, and grow from you know there because I want to feel like I'm growing every year yeah I, yeah I believe you are I mean and just what I've seen you know and that's what Thank I really you. love about because um, I love, I, just, I admire so many artists around Denver, but um, one of my favorite things about you is just being able to be innovative and apply different, you know, resources and tools and knowledge on different things, you yeah. know. Um, but talking, going back to Tanzania and like what you learned out there, I think that was really cool. And you know, this is like, like I don't even know who told me this, and this is something that has stuck with me since I heard about you, which was probably like a couple years ago. Um, but they told me that you wore the same shoes for like five years. Oh, yeah. Um, partially in Tanzania and yeah. here, right? So, yeah. like, tell me about that. I mean, I, for me, that's like really cool. And it, I think it's really cool because, you know, you like materialistic doesn't yeah. matter to you. And I think, yeah. you know, I just know you as a person and I know that's true. But I think that speaks volumes, you know. Yeah, I and mean, I uh, wore the same shoes like before I went, then when I was there, I wore the same shoes. <laughs> When I got back, I wore the same shoes because I, because I'm an artist, I always get them dirty. Yeah. And they always get messed up, so I kind of keep the same shoes. It's like that sacrifice you gotta make because, like, rather than being a sneakerhead and spending money on shoes, it's like I buy more paint or buy other products or samples or get prototypes done or you know just uh, do another piece. Yep. And I know because you are a breaker, sneakers are important to you, but yeah. you, you make that sacrifice, yeah. and that's. That's the difference between why you're right here and why some artists, I feel like, are still at their day job because of that sacrifice. Like, literally, I remember, like, working at, um, you know, day job and all my friends would go out to eat and I would be like, okay, I'm going to eat my ramen noodles today yeah. again for, like, day 35 or whatever, you know? Yeah. But that's that sacrifice that determines where you're going to be. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool and I really wanted to bring that up because I wanted to talk about sacrifice. Um, what is probably one of the f biggest things you've sacrificed besides, um, you know you know, shoes and clothes, I mean, to be in this position that you're in? It's more like years. Years of your it's life. It's like, uh, yeah, because like, there's no going back. Yeah. Uh, you're only t in your 20s once type of thing. Yep. It's like you're only able to use that young um, young excuse once. But like, it's um, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, once you're in it, you're in it. Uh, so sacrificing like that stability. Um, and like job security type of thing because yeah. you know if I go back to the regular job market I'm in there with the young 20 somethings at the ground level but I'm like let me just go for it and you know sacrifice that or just put it at risk to kind of do 
um, my art thing. So one of my, um, there was a couple things that stood out to me about you when I first met you. We actually shared the same studio and I, you know, saw your work everywhere in the studio and I'm like, who is this guy? And then, you know, one day we met, I think it was like either late in the night or early in the morning, but I was like, ever since after that, I realized that like you were probably the only one in the studio working as late as I am and as early as I was. And I'm like, damn, like this guy is about it. And then I started like researching you and like learning your work more. And I became a fan because of that, because I know like what it takes, you know, Mm -hmm. to get to that next level. And you were, you were in it and you were doing it. Um, so tell me, you know, what you do, you know, you, you spend most of your time um, as an entrepreneur and artist alone, I believe, in my case for sure. How about your case? Yeah, I mean, like, being an artist, I'm like, I'm in the studio here at uh, Redline Inn at uh, the Temple when I was there, you know, trying to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and get here at 5 o'clock in the morning, mainly because of traffic, beat, beat traffic. <laughs> yeah. And, like, you don't get days off type of thing, right. so pretty much it's kind of like the weekends are... Um, sometimes suck for me because some stores aren't open that I need to kind of be open to do uh, some work. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's like a lonely process of like trying to, or just like a lonely journey right. to get to where you want to go. Uh, but like for me, it kind of also opens me up to a lot of people because I, I have to build relationships. Mm-hmm. So you do meet people over time. Uh, but yeah, like when you're in the studio alone, it's like you're you're pretty much in a cave. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes you can see like the light at the end of the tunnel right. when you do a show, and it's like that's where all that work was for. Yep. Um, and you got to do what other people aren't willing to do, exactly. and a lot of people aren't willing to sacrifice. You know, that uh, Friday night solution session with DJ Loki or something. Like when I first started, I was doing a bunch of oil paintings, and sometimes I wouldn't pe- see people for. Uh, weeks at a time uh, because I was just like in the studio painting Um, so I had to find live art gigs to kind of do and live art gigs allowed me to kind of paint on stage in front of people I was meeting people that way that way it was kind of like I get to go to the club but you know I'm still working at the same time because I always want to feel like I'm working um, to get ahead Um, what were you like as a kid? Uh, I just picture you being a wild kid. <laughs> no, no, I was a class clown, class but I got A's and B's. Yeah. I nothing. I think I only ever got in the C once in class. How were you with your parents? Did you get yeah. in trouble often? No, no, no. I was like a sports kid. Played sports all the time. Uh, drew all the time. Yeah. Didn't do too much video game stuff. Uh, Sega Genesis was the last. That's game system one. I played but like after that it was kind of like sports was kept me busy and then we were moving around so much that you know sports dad yeah the dad was in the military so sports and art was like the thing I gravitated to uh, DJ for a little bit as well as doing videography web design stuff so like all wow. over the place so yeah. it was like anything creative with technology that involved hip hop and dance and music. I kind of was into at some point. Wow! So you inspire a ton of artists. I know you do. I see your Instagram and I see your responses and stuff. Who inspires you? Uh, a lot of um, artists that I've seen grow over time. So like Jaime Molina and Pedro, um, our local artists that I kind of get inspired by. My friend Tins and um, Jolt and. Uh, Dreads who created the Crush Festival mm-hmm. you know those type of artists really really get me going and just like get me into the studio every day uh, other artists outside um, I'd say Kende Wiley is one uh, that I think a lot of artists other artists know this artist in Thai from Chile uh, never proof I have all these different types of artists so like not only studio artists but also street artists mm-hmm. and then inter- interactive artists uh, so it's like I just try to draw inspiration from all of them yeah. and like add them to my body of work as much as possible. Um, I caught a tweet the other day about and you and your love for Andy Warhol. Tell me more about that. Oh, my love for Andy Warhol? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just like a, No, it wasn't love. I think no, it was, it was uh, some, some, How do you some, feel about someone uh, ruined the painting. Yeah. I don't hate Andy Warhol. 
was just like I'm just glad it wasn't a Basquiat. Yeah, it's just like I don't I don't hate other people's art. I'm just glad it wasn't a Basquiat. Yeah, yeah. That was just funny. I was like, oh, I wonder if he has something yeah. that's Warhol. Yeah, the whole like traditional art market and how they price stuff is ridiculous. Like just learning yeah, it's uh it's almost like a shell game sometimes, but uh it's like I, I have no idea how they do it. How do you, you price know? art? Um it's just a fill. Is there a formula? No, not really a formula. Just like a fill. It's always that iffy subject because sometimes you just never know. Because sometimes the time you put into it doesn't really matter. Yeah. As much as like the concept behind it, but some a lot of times you just never really know. So something you do that I admire um, is you give tips online on online um, mm -hmm. on your social media. I think it's called Art Tip Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. um, and. I really admire that because a lot of artists that I've worked with or have seen in the future or in the past have, um, you know, they they kind of like hide their tricks yeah. and tips. They don't want to like give that to the world because yeah. that's kind of what maybe makes them who they are. Yeah. But you like freely give out mm -hmm. all your knowledge. What um, what inspires that? Oh, I give out a lot because I want to be the artist that I would want to meet yeah. when I first started out. So people are able to ask me questions and 90% of my work is kind of like you can kind of ask me you know color choices and you know how i do a stroke like that or you know how do i get the consistency of the paint or what type of paint i use or how do i build a canvas things like that so you so, take the time to like answer these questions yeah i take a lot of time to answer. it's more time than i should uh, but it's kind of like i just want to make sure that um you know people are are on my feet supporting me so i have to make sure i reciprocate that that's yeah. awesome. I really, really like that. And I know people value that, like the hell out of that for yeah. me because there's not a lot of openness in that art community yeah. world, you know? Um, what are some tips for some artists that want to get more exposure? Uh, I'd say figure out your market. That's the biggest thing because sometimes it's like your art, your art's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like my art is not for everybody. Um, so not trying to focus on trying to reach everyone. So right. like reaching the people that love my artwork and figure out, you know, what do they all have in common? Because galleries do that. If you go to a gallery, now all galleries show uh, a variety of work. You have galleries that will show only work from 1960s to 1980s. And you have galleries that will only show um, abstract work or abstract cubism. Um, an artist that kind of goes out on your own, you really have to kind of think of it that way as well. Uh, because not every collector wants to put their work on their wall. It's like you have to find the collectors that want to do the work that, or want to show the work that you, uh, that you're creating. And then, yeah, consistency is also big. Yep. Um, because a lot of the opportunities I get are people that I first met, you know, a year ago. Mm -hmm. But they haven't really um, had an opportunity for me until, until a now. year later type yeah. of thing so it's like uh being patient and consistent is always a big thing document your work really well um meaning taking photos yeah and taking photos a lot of artists that want to watch that and yep. will appreciate you showing them you know how it's made and then you know you get a lot more content just from uh, showing all aspects of the art being created. So if you have a canvas, you have a vision, you have the tools to make it, you have the paint, and you have an iPhone, you can literally, yeah. that's like all you need, yeah. um, in a sense, to begin, right? Mm -hmm. um, so anyone can do it, business proof. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time today. I know yeah, that no our people learned a lot today from you, so yeah, thank awesome. you.